Okay, so um, I guess I'm going to pass it off to Carolyn if you'd like to start first and just introduce yourself and then just pass it along. Hi, everybody. My name is Carolyn Magner, also known as Goofy. Um, when I say my real name, most people are like, who? So um, I am known as Goofy at camp. And I have been with Seven Hills almost most of my lifetime. Um, and I have been the director for the past 10 summers. And during the year, I am a phys ed teacher. Um, so I am working with children all year round. Okay, who would like to go next, MJ? I'll go next. Um, I'm Mary Jane Maherg and I go by MJ at camp. And I am the director of Camp Timbercrest. Super excited to be back. I was there in 2009 um, and did a lot of other camps in between. So I'm excited to be back. Can't wait to get camp started this summer and just really looking forward to working with the girls on the staff. I was also a teacher, recently retired, so I've had a lot of experience with children too. Marie? Hi, I'm Marie Wixner. I go by Tigger at camp. Um, this will be my first summer with the Girl Scouts, uh, but I have 26 seasons in camping, um, and I am super excited to get down to Timbercrest and have a lot of fun. Great. All right, so, um, so we are going to get started. Um, I'm going to provide a PowerPoint presentation that's going to go over uh, what we would like families to do in order to prepare their child to come to camp. Uh, so what that's gonna look like, what arrival procedures are looking like, what pickup procedures will look like, our day-to-day -day operation uh, as well. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, Carolyn will be monitoring those questions. Uh, and once the presentation is over, we'll open it up for a question and answer segment. Okay. So we're gonna get started. All right, can everybody see that? All right. <clears throat> All right. Can you guys see that, Carolyn? Can you see that? Yep, you're good. Perfect. All right, here we go. So just as a recap, uh, we have been talking about our COVID modification guidelines since uh, the beginning and when we introduced our newsletter back in January. And uh, as you know, we had to reduce our attendance. So uh, both uh, Seven Hills and Timbercrest will have reduced attendance this year. We have put together a very comprehensive communicable disease plan that outlines what our COVID safety guidelines are going to look like uh, for pre-arrival, arrival, pickup, and day-to-day, -day, and, uh, and the information that we're sharing tonight is coming uh, from our CDP and the New York State Health Guidelines. Uh, campers are going to gather in small pods, uh, and they're going to sleep in a tent or cabin, two to three max, and our um, lodges that have bunk beds, they'll sleep head-toe uh, on the bunk bed and uh, every other. And then we have additional COVID um, information on our website. You'll see all the information listed and everything that we're talking about tonight, uh, as well as in our camp information packets, again, on our website or via camp doc as part of the camper profile. So pre-arrival uh, to camp. Uh, we are asking families to, to partner with us and do the following. Uh, now, keeping in mind some of this is uh, mandated um, by the state. Um, so we're asking you to please limit your travel, um, if at all possible. Um, we are asking that you please fill out the COVID-19 pre-screening health form, which is located on your child's uh, camper profile. Uh, you're gonna need to do that every day for five days leading up to your child's arrival to camp. All right now, um, you'll notice when you go into Camp Doc, you look on your daughter's account, you're going to see register for a new session, camper profile, pre-screening account. You're going to click on the pre-screening, and that's where you're going to have to take her temperature, 
and then answer those uh, pre-COVID health screening questions. And you do that for five days, every day for five days leading up to her arrival. Again, keep in mind that if your child is exhibiting any symptoms leading up to her arrival, including a temperature, um, fatigue, sore throat, uh, she will not be allowed to attend camp, okay? Uh, as per New York State Health Code, resident camp families must upload their child's ne negative COVID-19 test result in your daughter's profile. And that is part of the, um, uh, you'll see it in the camper profile. One of the tabs is called uh, COVID-19. Um, and uh, you'll be able to upload the test results there. It has to be no less than 72 hours old. Uh, the exception is if your child is vaccinated at least 14 days prior to her arrival, you do not have to provide a COVID-19 test, okay? So again, if your child is vaccinated at least 14 days prior to arrival, you do not have to take uh, the COVID-19 test, okay? Janet, there's a couple questions that are kind of right where you're at. I'm gonna try to organize them as you're, you're going. Um, with the COVID test, um, they're asking which one is acceptable. Is it a, the PRC or the rapid? The PRC uh, is acceptable. Rapid is acceptable. The, new guide, the, the updated guidelines just came out uh, yesterday and those have to be done the day of no older than six hours uh, per New York state. So the rapid testing is acceptable um, as long as it's six hours old. Um, also, is Camp Docs going to send auto reminders to complete the screening each day? Uh, I can check with Camp Doc. I don't believe we might be able to set that something up on our end, so we can definitely look into that. Okay. Um, questioning where we get the tests? Um, there are, uh, check with your, your uh, family physician. Uh, and go on to the New York State vaccine uh, site. And there's uh, a list of different site providers uh, that do provide uh, COVID testing. All right, another one is, um, what do we do if my daughter is at camp two consecutive weeks for five, the five day pre-screening? If they're there for two weeks consecutive, they're not going home, they don't have to do the five days. Um, in those two weeks, but you'll have to do it leading up to the two week arrival. So, but uh, the question is they're going home over the weekend. Then um, they will have to test them on that Saturday and that Sunday before they come back. So, um, I'm gonna say, hold on to the rest of the questions, Carolyn, so that we okay. can get through the presentation. Okay. So uh, drop off procedures. When you arrive at camp, you're going to be directed by a staff member to go right to the parking lot, and you will remain in the parking lot in your vehicle and or stand next to your vehicle, okay? A health assistant or health supervisor will come to your vehicle and take your daughter's temperature and ask the required COVID-19 health screening questions and collect any medication at that time. Once your child is cleared, your child will then uh, be taken through the remainder of the health screening and check-in process, which will be conducted right at your vehicle. All right, once she clears uh, both the COVID pre-screening and the check-in screening, she will be then escorted to her unit by a camp staff member. All right, uh, another staff member then will come to your vehicle and provide you with any additional instructions, uh, paperwork, or anything of that nature regarding pickup uh, on uh, Wednesday night or Friday night, okay? And then staff will collect your luggage from your vehicle and that'll be transported to uh, the unit. Um, Carolyn or MJ, anything you wanna add to this or anything additional regarding your pickup or arrival procedures? I think. No, nope, I'm, I'm sorry, Carol, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, MJ, you're good. I was just going to say, you know, just that we will be in at Timbercrest, we'll be moving them, uh, we'll be moving up into kind of into the loop before we get started. So we don't have cars that are backing up on the road. So we'll be moving you along that way. 
Anything on your end, Carolyn? Nope. What we're going to do, it's similar to, you know, our check-in and leave day in the past. We're going to ask people to pull in and back in and the staff will then, you know, go down each side and mm -hmm. go through the procedure from there. Great. Pick up procedures. Okay. Very similar to drop off. You're going to come in to camp. You're going right to the parking lot where you'll remain in the parking lot. Um, please have your photo identification ready because uh, campers, we can only release campers to those that are authorized to pick your child up. Please do not forget to include yourself on this form. You'll find the camper pickup form on your daughter's camper profile. Um, so again, you want to include everybody that is authorized to pick your child up. Um, due to social distancing and our COVID guidelines, we are not doing any type of uh, parent program uh, this year. So uh, we will be, the staff will be taking your uh, daughters to the parking lot and taking them right to your uh, vehicle uh, where they will be cleared at that time. Okay, at that time you'll then receive any leftover medication, a bad sheet and a photo and your luggage will be brought to you uh, at this time as well, okay? So as you can see with pickup, uh, excuse me, drop off and pickup procedures, uh, families are not being allowed into the main camp this year. Again, as our way of uh, combating uh, COVID and um, manda uh, uh, mitigating social uh, distancing. Right. Anything we need to add here, Carolyn? Nope, again, okay, okay. It, it'll be staff will meet you at your cars and continue the process, so. MJ, anything you wanna add here? I think if everything's being, been said, we're, we just bring the daughters out, bring your daughters out to the cars. Okay. Masks, so we are, uh, I know this has been a very um, uh, interesting topic. Um, and so we, uh, as all of you, uh, no, or may not know, uh, we confirm the state has um, lifted the mask mandate uh, as it relates to children and uh, vaccinated adults uh, for both outdoors, both day and overnight camps. And that was effective as of yesterday, June 7th. So the regulation states that face, uh, face masks are no longer required outdoors, but are still strongly recommended um, indoor settings. At this current point in time, we are planning to adhere to the state's new guidelines and will no longer require face masks for campers uh, or staff uh, in outdoor settings. However, we are still reviewing all of the guidelines as, um, as like I said, they just came out yesterday and we will make our final call next week as to what the guidelines will look like indoors uh, for mask wearing, but right now, uh, any uh, outdoor activity, campers and staff uh, will not be required to wear masks, okay? Uh, now, if masks are required um, indoors, the, um, we are asking campers to bring at least five reusable masks to camp. We will have masks on hand uh, for those that need replacing. Um, and that uh, per New York State Health Code, bandanas, buffs, and face shields are not acceptable uh, face coverings. So uh, you want to be mindful of that. Okay. okay. So hygiene, cleaning, and disinfecting. Right. So again, we are going to have hand washing station, stations and signage will be provided throughout the camp property. Um, we'll work with campers to assure that we're washing hands on a regular basis. You'll also see in the parking lot, uh, porta pots along with the hand washing stations. And, I, and um, so that families that do need to use facilities will be able to do that uh, uh, at camp as well. Hand sanitizers will be provided throughout camp property. So every building activity area unit will have hand sanitizer on hand. Our buildings, restrooms, and equipment are also gonna be placed on a regular cleaning schedule, all right? And so we're asking families to help reduce the risk of exposure uh, and sharing um, um, that families um, please discourage their children from bringing 
uh, their favorite toys or stuffed animals to camp. Um, and again, that's uh, indicated in the New York State guidelines as to help uh, combat the spread. Social distancing in pods. So uh, as we've been stating, uh, campers are gonna travel in small groups of eight to 12 with two to three staff. Um, and that uh, they'll remain together the entire week uh, that they're at camp. So they'll um, social distance together, they'll go to activities together, they'll sit together at the same uh, table in the dining hall um, and um, everything will be done together with that pod. That's again, one way for us to reduce uh, um, the spread of COVID. Now keep in mind per New York State uh, code, to reduce the risk of exposures, uh, campers may not leave their designated stable group except for essential activities, uh, such as a doctor's appointment. Uh, whenever unvaccinated campers circulate outside of the stable group for any essential activities, uh, the uh, health department asks that they please be mindful of, um, of wearing masks uh, when, when uh, feasible. So, our day-to-day -day procedures. Again, we talked about campers traveling in small groups, building sleeping areas uh, will be clean and sanitized. Social distancing will be practiced. We'll have hand washing stations uh, throughout camp. Meal time in the dining hall will consist of tables spaced six feet apart and will consist of a staggered schedule this year. So there'll be groups uh, scheduled group A will be going uh, at a certain time uh, starting like at 7, 7.30 in the morning. And, and then um, group B will go half an hour, 45 minutes after that. Uh, and that will be scheduled like that uh, throughout the day. Okay, daily health screenings. So all campers and staff are gonna be screened twice a day, which will occur before breakfast and before dinner. And anyone exhibiting signs and symptoms of COVID will be placed in our designated isolation area, which at which that time you, the parent guardian, will be contacted to make arrangements to pick your child up from camp. Okay. We will also be making contact with our uh, camp physician as well as the New York State Health Department for further guidelines. So if any camper that displays signs and symptoms, again, they will be put in a designated isolation area supervised by our health supervisor. And parents and guardians will be contacted to make arrangements to pick up your child within 24 hours. All right, and again, we will contact our family. Uh, we're asking that you contact your family physician to have your child tested for COVID and that you have to notify the camp of the results because we are required to notify the New York State Health Department of the results. Now, the New York State Health Department has issued uh, different scenarios regarding uh, exhibiting signs and symptoms uh, that uh, families um, will have to uh, adhere to. So there's four different scenarios. So in the first scenario, it talks about in the event that a parent or guardian or other household member of a camper that is attending overnight camp uh, must be isolated because they have tested positive for or exhibited symptoms of COVID, you, the parent guardian or other household member are not allowed to enter the camp property for any reason, including picking up your child excuse me, and other arrangements uh, have to be made. The next scenario talks about uh, if you, the parent guardian, uh, who is a member of the same household as the child attending camp, is exhibiting signs and symptoms of COVID, or if you tested positive for the virus, then you must send an alternate parent or guardian or an emergency contact who's authorized by you to pick your child up at camp. And as a close contact, your child then uh, must not return to camp for the duration of the quarantine, okay? okay. Um, all right, 
Here are the other two scenarios. Scenario three, if you're the parent guardian, uh, as the same member of the camper and the household is under quarantine order from a local health department without symptoms or a positive test, they must utilize an alternative parent guardian or emergency contact authorized by the parent to pick the child up. As a contact of a contact, the child camper may return to camp during the duration of the quarantine. And then the last scenario is if the child camper or, or their household member becomes systematic for COVID-19 and are test positive for COVID, the child must quarantine in accordance with local health department guidance and may not return or attend the camp program until the quarantine period is complete. Okay. And if your child tests positive for COVID-19 after a camp session is over, you must notify camp immediately because we in turn need to then notify the health department immediately and then notify uh, the campers and staff um, that were in the pod uh, with your child. Okay, so programs and activities, what will take place uh, and, and with what modifications? So again, we want to assure you that uh, the goal of the physical, dis physically distance activity is not to replicate a non-physically distance activity, but rather to replicate the outcome. So in other words, we want to put modifications together in order for camp, those fun camp activities to continue. So what does that look like? It means training our staff, very similar to what we do already when we do risk management. We ask our staff to ask certain questions before doing an activity. So the same thing applies uh, when looking at doing activities outdoors or indoors, um, asking these uh, pertinent questions. Um, and then in, uh, realizing that the activity can take place with modification. So these are just a sampling of some of the activities that still can take place at camp, just with modifications in place. So camp is going to go on. The activities are still gonna be there that the girls love. There just might be some slight modifications in place to adhere for social distancing. And here's a really good example of the ropes course activity. So girls that are participating in the ropes course at Seven Hills, this is a uh, excellent example. Uh, typically what you would see uh, without modifications is the two people holding the pole would be closer to the person on the, the guide wire with their hands up um, trying to protect the person from falling. So in this particular case, so that they're not um, right on top of the individual, they're utilizing a PVC pipe uh, to still maintain that social distancing and still being able to help that individual with balance. Okay, so that concludes our presentation. So now I'm going to open it up. So I'm sure there's a, a lot of questions. I'm going to open it up for the question and answer segment. Um, Caroline, I know you've been monitoring the chat, but what yep. are some of the questions that uh, people are asking tonight? So one of the first questions um, was asking if counselors are in the tents with the girls age nine um, or are they by themselves? So again, our campers, if they are brownies, they sleep in one of our larger cabins and staff are in a different area. Um, for the rest of our units, the campers and staff sleep in separate quarters. All right. Um, so we talked about in a came up a couple times was the girls that are at camp two consecutive weeks, but there's a break in between. So the question comes up about the testing. Right. So there has been some uh, confusion on that and we are reaching out to our uh, council attorney and the New York State Health Department for further guidance on that. They're very clear uh, regarding staff as far as staff needing to be um, tested weekly. Uh, non-vaccinated staff. However, there's really not specific language on campers. 
So that's what we're trying to get clarification on. And as soon as we have uh, updates on that, we will post that information on our website and uh, get that out to you. Um, question is about, um, hold on, it's in two parts here. So camper will be vaccinated by July 1st. Um, the second shot is this June 17th. So they're wondering the camp is July 4th. Do they still need to test? If it's within uh, at least 14 days, uh, then they do not have to test. Um, question was drop off and pick up our by last name. Yes, that is correct. This year, please, we're asking people. I know in the past, sometimes I open the gates and everyone comes at one time because they're excited. This year, we're really asking people to stick to that last name. So then that way, you know, we can try to move check in quickly so people aren't sitting in their cars. So again, we're asking people to really pay attention to the, the last name names. Uh, what does the screening include? And then question mark temperature checks. So the health screening includes the temperature check. So they're going to take their temperature. If their temperature is uh, 100 or less, that is, the, that, that is a good thing. Anything above 100 is um, um, questionable. So then typically what will happen is then we might ask uh, the child to sit in a shaded area to cool down to see if maybe they might be just overheated. And then we'll take their temperature again. If their temperature is still elevated, uh, they will not be able to remain at camp. Uh, and then the other COVID questions are having to do with uh, symptoms. So are they uh, experiencing any fatigue, uh, problems breathing, loss of smell, headache, nausea, diarrhea? Um, and if they answer yes to um, questions that are posed, uh, then they would not be allowed to uh, enter camp. Uh, and then we would instruct you to then contact your family physician to get a COVID test. Um, and then we would have to make sure it's a negative test and then get cleared by the health department for attending. Um, if siblings are at camp, will they be able to sit together or see each other if they are in different camp pods because of age? So um, they might be able to see each other in the dining hall, depending on when the staggered schedule takes place. Um, however, if they are not in the same program, uh, they will not be in the same pod or unit. Uh, so um, that, that they could see each other in the dining hall. They would see each other uh, at, uh, opening and closing campfires, um, and um, possibly during different periods throughout the day, but they would not be in the same pod if they're not in the same program. Can you provide clarification about the timing of test? COVID guidelines say that results need to be no more than 72 hours old. Return times on tests specifically the state test sites have been notoriously unpredictable. It is, is it the test that needs to happen within 72 hours? According to the New York state guidelines, the test can be no more than 72 hours old. So, um, and you have to upload the results. So um, we have to have the results of the COVID test in order for uh, the child to attend camp if they are not vaccinated. If they are vaccinated, at least 14 days prior to attending their session, they do not need the test. Um, and then it says, what if they don't get the re results in time for camp? Okay. Contact, if, if for some reason your test results are not coming back, reach out to customer care or myself, and then we can always consult with the health department 
we would really, we're really gonna have to follow the guidelines from the health department on that uh, because they're very clear um, in, in their guidelines as far as every child that is not vaccinated has to have a COVID test result. Um, so there's a question, is there a way for camper parents to see campers via videos or photos while at camp? My child is six. So yes, there's access. Um, we have blogs that we post. And so there will be photos that we post and we kind of tell a little bit about what the kids are doing that day. Um, again, it's in general with the whole camp, but we do post photos from the groups and we do our best to try to get around to every group. All right. Where do we upload the vaccination card? I put it in Camp Docs under the spot. You would upload a negative test. Is that correct? For the test results? Yes. For the vaccine, it is part of your immunization tab. Uh, so you're going to see immunizations are required. And then right under the immunization, ask about a COVID vaccine. If your child has had the COVID vaccine, yes or no. If you hit yes, then there's a spot for you to upload your vaccination card. All right, so this question is asking for a little more clarification. So filling out, so their child's coming to camp for two consecutive weeks, and I'm not sure if that's one of our camps, um, but they're asking how are they gonna fill out the daily pre-screening when they're not with them? So again, because if they're at camp, they're not going to do it. I know we're recording each day. Right. So, yeah, so this is Lori Valenti. I'm sorry. I've asked this question a couple of times and I think it's easier if I just ask in person. Yeah. She will, she'll be doing camp at, I think Timbercrest is first and then Seven Hills. So both of them are going to be Girl Scout camps, resident right. camps. Okay. So, so she's going back to back, Lori? Yeah. Like session one to session two. So, yeah. so what you're going to need to do Okay, is before she goes to Timbercrest, you're going to get on five days before. So every day for five days, you're going to log into pre screening and you're going to uh, take her temperature and, and fill out those pre screening questions. Then when she comes to camp on that Sunday, she'll be screened again. And then she'll be screened every day, twice a day, while she's at Timbercrest. Then you're gonna pick her up on Friday. And then we ask that you, you do it again on Saturday um, to make sure. And then on Sunday before she comes to make sure she's not exhibiting any signs and symptoms. And then when you bring her to Seven Hills on Sunday, she'll be screened again. So uh, you just have to do it the five days leading up to Timbercrest. And then that Friday night and Saturday and then Sunday morning before you drop her off at Seven Hills. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that there was some continuation of the record for the days I don't have her at home. Yeah, because we're gonna be doing it at camp. Oh yeah, okay. Thanks. Yep. Question asking, do you anticipate the request changing for travel 14 days prior to camp to change? Um, it's possible. It's very possible. I mean, the guidelines have been have been changing uh, pretty pretty rapidly. Um, so again, we're asking if you can avoid the travel to please do so. Um, we know that sometimes it's it's challenging, but if you can, to please do so. All right. Um... I have not received any information about the camp that is not COVID related. When should we be expected to receive such information? Will there be an open house for families? I'm not understanding the question, I guess. So they've been receiving COVID, if I'm understanding it correctly, you've been receiving COVID information uh, well, I, I didn't receive any other information except for this email about this meeting, and I'm starting okay. to uh, con be concerned because I've never, I've never attended, we've never attended any of these, and uh, haven't 
I haven't received anything, I'm not finding anything online. So, um, so I'm, I'm just wondering when we're gonna get other information. Um, you should be receiving weekly updates from Camp Doc. So whatever email you used um, to register your daughter, um, Camp Doc sends weekly reminders. Um, and then um, not anything. Just, the this, just this COVID invitation is the only thing I've been receiving. I haven't been receiving anything and I only put in one email. So, so Janet, is it the parent guide? Is that... The parent guide, yeah, as part of your camper profile, there is the camp information packet. And in the camp information packet, there is COVID information in there. And there's also COVID information on our website. Yeah, no, not COVID related, everything else. Like, what is the camp going to look like? How many, you know, where is it? Like, what, Again, what if, if, but in terms of like food, like, you know, right. things that are if not you, COVID related. And we can talk more offline, Iris, but again, the camp information packet has a lot of that information that you're talking about. Um, and then there is a frequently asked questions tab on our website that lists a lot of questions that you're asking that has the answers to uh, right on the website. So we can talk more offline. If you send me your email, um, I can connect with you and, and um, try to answer your questions. I did already send an email, but I'll send again. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh... So, Stephanie, I'm not sure if you're answer your if you want to unmute and ask your question if we if we've met your question. No, I, I I don't understand if the test needs to be done within 72 hours before camp, or do we need to have the results within 72 hours before we get to camp? It's it's my understanding that it's both. The test can be no uh, later than 72 hours, and you have to have the results uploaded into Camp Doc in order for your child to attend. The state testing sites are not that reliable. Okay, so so basically we have to get a rapid test done before six hours before, it's a six hour window you said, is that correct? That was the latest guidelines that came out yesterday. So rapid testing is uh, acceptable. Uh, so if, if you have a rapid test, you can use that and upload that into Camp Doc. Thank you. Do you have any idea how much that costs? Do I personally or? or Anybody. I would be really helpful. Nobody seems to know. I don't think insurance covers it. And I have three kids going to camp, three. Right. So I can tell you this, Jessica, that is if you um, go through your county health department and you tell them your child has any symptom, say they have a headache, then it will be free. But if sure, you um, I can, rely I on insurance, it can lie be, and say that they have symptoms, sure. Or well, it can no, be if you go you through lie, but they, you know, it takes five days. Or you can go through your insurance and you can pay 80, 80 bucks a pop. Um, I had to have but, all three of my girls tested last week for a wedding. So I understand, like I get it. I'm just telling you, you asked for the information and that's what it is. If you go through the county and they're symptomatic or you suspect that they may have come into contact with somebody, They'll, it'll be free, and it's usually my kids. It was back in four hours, what and it was a regular test. I'm in Cattaraugus County. Well, and I think like I think the other piece that's difficult about that is that then it becomes a part of like then like then you become like on the radar of the New York State Health Department, right? Like not if you test negative, right? But you're there's still like that is still like if you say that you have symptoms that raises a flag like that like if i were to say that my child has symptoms or that like whether you test negative or not like it raises a flag for the new york state health department i, yeah, I would not want to want to open my things. family up to that scrutiny okay i can i mean i understand it is a very controversial issue i get it um and we are trying to find working with our attorneys and um, the to and the health department to see uh, lists that will provide a, a sites 
that provide uh, free testing um, and if we as camps are allowed to test on site. So, um, and as soon as we have more information, uh, we will let you know. Um, but, and if anything changes, not, the I'm guidelines, not, if anything changes um, regarding the testing, we will definitely let you know. Um, but right now, the, the guidelines are saying that the campers have to be tested. And again, it does ask on Camp Doc that if you do need assistance from Girl Scouts to indicate that, and we will work with families um, to help get you uh, your girls tested. Carol, are there any other questions? I'm trying to go through. There's several. Hi, um, can you guys hear me? I just want to, Jessica, I don't know if you saw on the chat, but I went on to like Walgreens and urgent care websites. The testing's free. It's free if you have a prescription from a doctor. No, you know, it's free. If you go to Walgreens website, it's free drive through testing. My mother-in-law did it the other week. You just schedule an appointment and go through Walgreens to get a test. And With no I went, symptoms? No symptoms. Nope. Okay. And I went I to did. an urgent care couple, you know, last year and got a test for free too. Testing, I've never heard of someone getting charged for testing unless it's Thomas, like for the bill games. Oh, Thomas, this is Emily DeCristine. I'm so sorry. Yes, that's absolutely true. But when I did that a few months ago, it, it really took several days to get the results back. So, you know, that's that's probably another concern because, you know, everybody's got to get these tests in within a certain amount of time. Right, right. I mean, that that we can't control and that, you know, Janet said she'll try to find sites that are reliable for that. But generally, COVID testing is not something you pay for. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. One of the questions Janet has to is asking about Tuck Shop. Will that be reopened? Yes. So it is a uh, reopening. Um, working with the vendor, it will be reopened and we'll um, have looking to post some new items uh, on there as well. So again, that's something that was different this year again due to COVID. Um, the stores are now online and that is part of your daughter's camper profile. So one of the tabs will be camp store. And if you click on that, it'll take you right to the uh, store link where you can then decide if you want to purchase any camp merchandise. It will be mailed directly to your house. Um, and so you don't have to worry about, you know, being it shipped um, to the office or to camp, it'll be shipped right to your house. Um, camp is locked out. Question mark was being asked as it gets closer to the camp that sometimes Camp Doc could be locked. Is that going to be up unlocked so they can upload information? Yes. Yeah, so if you had problems uploading and can't get in, please contact customer care and they will be able to upload or assist you with things that you need. Can, can I ask something about that? So, because I put this in the chat, the COVID-19 test results are supposed to be uploaded into the profile. The profile says right now that the parents get locked out on July 5th. So it's not part of the pre-screening that you're talking about. That's actually in the profile that we get locked out of. Right. So again, if you have, if you need to upload uh, results, we can do that for you. And then we can... Um, uh, help you uh, get that up into your account. So then is customer care going to be available on the Sundays if we do a rapid test that we need to get those done within six hours the rapid before test, we drive them? Right. The rapid test, if you're not able to upload it on that day, bring it to camp with you. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If you have to do a rapid test on Sunday, just bring the results with you. Um, question is, how do we access the blogs? So you're going to be receiving an email on Monday uh, with the blog information and the login information. So you want to look for your email on Monday morning that will provide that information for you. Um, this is for Timber, Timber, uh, Timber Crest question with the canoe trip. Are there COVID rules any different 
Will there any be any additional packing information? So the COVID rules um, will not be uh, different. Um, masks are not going to be required uh, outdoors. So when they're canoeing, they're not going to be wearing masks. And when they're on site in their, their tent area, um, as long as they're able to stay six feet apart, they won't be it need to wear masks. We will be doing health screening uh, while they're on the trip um, and following uh, those COVID guidelines. Uh, but there'll be nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Um, additional information on the trips will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, we, uh, working with the vendor, we, we might have to postpone our um, info night, which is scheduled Thursday night. So uh, we'll be uh, send information out tomorrow with updated info. Um, Janet, there's a lot of comments about not getting weekly updates. So if we can check to make sure that is updated in Camp Doc, that that's happening. Yep, I will reach out to Camp Doc to make sure that that's happening. Um, question about um, my daughter's going to be in the CIT program. She is in a wedding on the 17th. Can she leave for the day and return that night or Saturday? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, 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 uh, if you need to pull her, then yes. Um, and again, um, as, as the health department regulation state, if, she, if there are areas where she needs to wear a mask, if she's not vaccinated, then we ask that you know those protocols are followed and then she would be screened um, after she comes back. Uh, so question about the camp store. Um, so when, we need to buy stuff from the store before she goes to camp. It's not treats and food at camp. Yeah, so the store will be open. And so um, you can go in, like I said, to her profile and you can decide to purchase t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, water bottles, um, stuffed animals um, through the online store. Um, again, due to COVID, we are not doing an in, uh, in-person store this year. Uh, our in-person store will return next year um, in 2022. Um, I'm trying to go through the questions here. They keep popping up. Um, Okay, I feel like we've added, you know, if you're not able to upload something, you know, just reach out to customer care. Again, if your test results aren't back um, or you get them back and you can't get them uploaded, then bring them to camp. Um, no, the girls should not need cash for anything um, at camp. No, and the store should be open. I'm talking to the vendor. The vendor texted me today saying, that the store was going to be reopened. So you should be able to access the store. If not, please reach out to customer care and um, um, let us know. But the vendor did assure me that the store was reopened. Yep. Um, there's some new qu questions on here from people who have first time campers. Um, I would happily stay on at the end, you know, and try to answer some of your questions on that. Um, so again, if those of you who have first time campers, I will definitely be happy to stay on and answer some of your questions. Um, looking at all camp activities, um, you know, we are looking to do opening and closing campfires kind of in pods and spaced out. Um, and all camp activities, again, we're looking at kind of structuring some of that differently. Small group activities where they're competing against each other, posting times. So again, we're looking at trying to be that creative you know, I think of, you know, in school, I was doing dancing with kids instead of a typical dance. We were doing more line dancing. So again, it's kind of changing some of those, those program ideas. Marie and or MJ, do you want to add to that as far as Timbercrest protocol? Um, 
MJ, I think you're muted if you're. Yeah. Um, we are looking at activities, um, some traditional, some new, where actually we really can space them out and still try to keep things as normal as possible while maintaining the social distancing. Um, so just a lot of fun things, different things, um, taking the same thing and, and changing it, you know, and adapting it um, so that these girls will have as much fun as we possibly can have this summer. Mm -hmm. Janet, can you clarify right now, is the tuck shop online open still or was the deadline closed? The, there was the, when it initially opened, we're running it as a special. And so that piece has closed. Now um, we are reopening it. There's gonna be some new items that are gonna be posted. Those are not on there yet, but as my understanding, the store is now open again and new items will be posted soon. Uh, all right, I'm trying to get to the questions. I have some people direct messaging me too as I'm trying to go through this. So I'm trying the, to get to On the topic else. of the of the store, just since that's the last question you answered, I opened it and it um it's just it's asking for a password. Like when I click the link from Camp Doc, it's asking for a password. It says private store. I will yeah. uh, I will have them uh, remove that because it shouldn't be, if, if the link is provided, you should have direct access. So I will work with the vendor to have that removed. Okay. Are there any other questions related to tonight's presentation? Any concerns? regarding our COVID guidelines, um, as Carolyn said, and I'm hoping MJ and her Marie can stay on for those first time camper parents that would have questions, we'll be happy to stay on and answer those for you. Um, I have a question, I'm so sorry, because this is kind of a repeat question. So, um, so I'm just gonna ask one more time and I really apologize for, for misunderstanding the first time, but Okay, so my daughter's second shot is June 17th. So then her fully vaccinated date would be July 1st. Mm -hmm. So then her first day at her first week of camp is July mm -hmm. 4th, just a few days later. So she's so fine. She's, she's fine. okay. Yep. She doesn't have she, to get the separate She'll be fully test. vaccinated, so she does not need the test. Okay, okay. And it, it sounds so... Then for the pre-screening, the five days prior for each week, is that going to be, um, is it like Tuesday through, is it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Is it yes. Tuesday through Saturday or? Yes, because yes. if you're coming on Sunday, then yes, Tuesday through Saturday. And it's Tuesday simply Saturday. going okay. on, it's simply going on and taking your daughter's temperature. And yeah. it's just a simple question, is your daughter's temperature 100 uh, or below? Yes or no? Uh -huh. You click. Yeah, yeah, I looked at it. I yeah. definitely checked it out. It looks really standard. I just wanted to make sure I didn't mess up the dates there. Yeah, no, no, no. So it's it's okay. five days leading up to because we want to just make sure that as as parent guardians you're monitoring your child's symptoms so that um, when they do come to camp they are symptom free. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I have a similar question to Emily. Um, my daughter will be fully vaccinated um, the 30th of June and camp is the 11th. So it looks like it'll be 11 days past fully um, the full vaccination. So does that mean she still needs to go for a COVID test? No, she is fine. Even though it's 11 days? She's fine because okay. she was fully vaccinated July, uh, June 30th, you said, right? Yes, and she'll yes. be going to camp July 11th. Yeah, so she's fine. Okay, just wanted to double check, thank you. Yeah. There's a question, Janet, that um, will there be a reimbursement? Oh, hold on. The chat just jumped on me. Um, if a camper exhibits symptoms prior to camp and is not allowed to attend camp or has symptoms during camp. Yeah. So um, refunds will be uh, handled on a case by case. So if that's if that is the situation, we'll work with you. Um, and if we're able to maybe get her into a different session later on in the summer, We'll be happy to do that. If not, then we will, you know, we will work with you on refunds. Okay. 
Um, I know someone posted that they join late. We are recording this so that we can try to reshare it so you can see it. Okay. Um, Lori, I would reach out to customer care. I think Susie, okay, thanks. Susie had a question if they're at camp um, before they come to Girl Scout camp and they're not able to do the five day screening. Um, what I would say is hopefully the camp that she's attending, they should be doing this, the daily screening. Um, try to get a copy of that. Um, and that um, depending on when you're picking her up, if you're picking her up on Friday or Saturday, um, then screen her that Friday night and or Saturday, and again on Sunday before she comes to camp, and then um, bring that, that screening uh, form with you. Any right. other questions? I have one question. Um, is Kim Doc locking everybody on the same date or does it depend when your daughter goes to camp? It depends on when your daughter goes to camp. So how many weeks before your daughter gets to camp is Camp Docs locking you out? Two weeks. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Anything else, Carolyn? Someone is mentioning that they were locked out June 1st. All right, I'll check with Camp Doc. They shouldn't be, but I'll check with them. You know, just so you know, um, I, I did double check my registrations and I did register for the correct session. So I don't know what happened, but my sessions got changed on me. <laughs> All right, so Lori, I would say call customer care tomorrow. Yeah. And okay. ask to speak to uh, Hillary Smith. Okay, will do. Thanks, Janet. Yep. Anything else, Carolyn? Not that, that I could have missed something. So please, if someone, if I missed something, I apologize. My screen was bouncing between private and full question. So <laughs> doing my best. I'm doing a great job. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I know that this is uh, unprecedented times. This is new information for all of us. Um, I appreciate your partnership and patience as we navigate through this. Um, and we're just super excited that your girls are coming to camp this summer. And we're just super excited to get back to camp. It's We're coming home again. So, um, as we will continue to monitor our guidelines and update our parents and guardians uh, as we are updated from the state. Um, and it's, like I said, next week, we will have our final decision on masks indoors, on what that's gonna look like, but know that uh, masks are not gonna be required outdoors. Um, so thank you again. If you wanna stay on, if you're coming to camp for the first time and you wanna stay on, please do so. Um, and uh, thank you everybody and have a good night.